Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope that you guys are all doing really well. Today we're actually gonna be doing another Exploring the World of video, which if you've been around for a while, it's a series that I've been running on my channel. It's also been a minute since I've actually added a video to that series, but I had a video topic in mind over the past few months and I thought, what better time than now? By reading the title, you probably already know that we're talking about the toxic world of shipping. I think it's a pretty interesting topic, but I also think it might get a bit heated, which is why I've kind of stayed away from it for so long. But I guess we're throwing caution to the wind today. Before we get into it though, I did want to give a quick shout out to today's sponsor, which is Vessi. Personally, I'm a devout sneaker wear, regardless of any kind of season, which if you've ever experienced a Canadian winter, you would know how hard that is because Canadian winters are basically just 90% slush. And if I'm being honest here, every single time that I put on sneakers in the winter, I'm basically just telling myself before I even get out of the door that I'm gonna end up with wet soggy socks. But that actually hasn't been an issue for me anymore. Bessie hooked me up with a pair of their shoes and my feet are dry. They offer super comfy shoes, which what I love about them is that they have the silhouette of a sneaker, but they act like a boot because they're 100% waterproof and snowproof, which means I don't have to sacrifice my outfit. And I also can wear them with anything because sneakers go with everything. And when I say 100% waterproof, I mean 100% waterproof. I can put my shoe under running water with tissue in it, and afterward the tissue is still bone dry. Like they're not kidding around with that claim. They're also made out of a climate knit called Dymatex, which keeps you warm in the winter and cool in the summer, which means they literally are a year round rain or shine shoe. And they're also sustainably made, which I really like. The knitting process for the shoes means that there's less material and water waste, and there's no animal byproducts, so it's actually vegan as well. They've been especially great at keeping my feet warm and dry for whenever I'm walking my dogs at the park, Park, since it gets ridiculously muddy and swampy this time of year because all the snow is melting. But I'm also really excited to use them for walking trails and hikes once it starts getting warmer because they're just the type of shoe that you don't really have to worry about ruining because even if they get dirty, they're like insanely easy to clean. Like you can rinse them with water and then wear them immediately after. I've definitely been a really big fan of Vessi saving me from wet soggy socks, so I would definitely recommend them. They're just a great anytime, anywhere kind of shoe. If you're interested, you can check them out at the link below and use my code CaseyAnzo to get $25 off of your Vessi shoes. Thanks again to Vessi for sponsoring today's video and let's get back into it. But I think before we can actually start to talk about what involves shipping and the stuff surrounding it, we have to figure out what shipping is. If we're relying on good old urban dictionary, it's technically the act of one wanting or supporting two individuals involved in a romantic relationship. And usually that coupling will be referred to as a ship. And if you believe in that ship, then you're a shipper. So for example, I ship myself with Pedro Pascal, but the important detail here is that this is not real. This is also not happening. That's not to say that people who do get shipped together can't end up together or don't end up getting together at some point, but the act of shipping is typically just people hoping and believing that they will. So it's kind of like just rooting them on. When I was trying to figure out where the term originated, it was actually pretty hard to figure out when people started to use the term shipping. Personally, my gut reaction was that it was probably Tumblr that had started it, mainly because that's when I had started to see it back in like 2011, and then moving on from there, it just got more and more popular. But it turns out it can actually be traced back all the way to like Star Trek and the X-Files. And then it got more popular as it was used during Harry Potter and Friends. But I think regardless of whenever shipping became the term, I feel like it's just always been around. Like we've all experienced the act of shipping something. Maybe you watched When Harry Met Sally and you wanted them to end up together at the end of the movie. Or instead of Katniss getting with Peeta, you wanted her to end up with Gale in The Hunger Games. Whether you knew about the term shipping or not, those emotions of wanting people to end up together and rooting for their relationship are what shipping describes. So whether you knew it or not, you've probably shipped people together before. And overall, it just kind of feels like harmless stuff. Like you just want two fictional characters to get together. But I think that social media has really changed the culture of shipping overall, mainly because I think that the line between an actor and the character they play is a lot more fuzzy because viewers can actually have a direct line of contact with the person who plays the character they love. But where I start to think that it gets really interesting is when you consider when shipping goes beyond a show or movie because there isn't a show or movie that it came from. And I think that there's two examples that we're gonna be talking about in this video that I think really show how out of hand shipping can become when it involves shipping to actual people who don't have characters at all because they're singers. And the ships that I'm talking about here are Larry Stylinson and Cameron, where Larry Stylinson is supposed to be Harry Styles and Louis Tomlinson from One Direction, and Cameron is Camila Cabello and Lauren Haregi from Fifth Harmony. The reason that I chose these ships is because they have a lot of lore behind them. And 
I'm not kidding when I say a lot of lore. I also think when it comes to these two ships that they're quite unique in the sense that they've reached a boiling point that most ships don't reach because they just don't have as big of a fan base, and they've triggered a lot of moments outside of the ship that most ships have never done before. But the one drawback is that since both ships were so big and they have so much history behind them, it would take me days to figure out how to give you guys like the full history of them. So with that in mind, I'm not gonna be covering every single little detail about both of the ships. I'm just gonna be giving you like a general backstory just for anyone who's never heard of them before. So think of it kind of like a spark notes history. Now that that's out of the way, let's start talking about Larry Stylinson. So how our story begins is we have Harry Styles and Louis Tomlinson, who are both members of a British boy band called One Direction that was formed back in 2010. The story of course is that they came from X Factor, they delivered the hits. We all know this. But what we might not know, or at least what I didn't know, was that a lot of Larry believers feel that Harry and Louis actually met before One Direction. It's just a rumor, by the way. It was something that I found in a timeline on like a Larry Tumblr blog. It was very detailed, and if you're interested, I'll probably link it in the description box, because I think that it's a good example of how devoted these shippers can be. But basically the ship started because fans had started to notice that Louis and Harry seemed to be quite close. There are moments in person, like in band videos or during concerts or online, like in tweets or twit cams. People started to collect all of these moments and started putting them into like compilation videos and stuff like that. And it really inspired a fan base within the fan base. And this fan base basically believed that Louis and Harry were in a secret relationship with each other, but they actually couldn't like be free and open about it because their management at the time, which were called modest, didn't want them coming out as anything other than straight because it would make them less marketable. And that growing sub fan base began to call themselves the Larrys. While Larry was definitely the first ship within One Direction, it definitely wasn't the only one. Basically any kind of pairing of the members would result in some sort of fan base believing that they were in a secret relationship with each other. But the difference between Larry and all of those other ships was that Larry was by a mile the strongest fan base. And I think this is because of a mix of things, mainly because they were the first ship to really come out of the band, they had the largest fan base, and also because they were the most devoted to proving that their ship was legitimate. In terms of the Cameron ship, it actually has a very similar origin story to the Larry one as well. Not only did Camila and Lauren meet each other also on X Factor when they were paired together in Fifth Harmony in 2012, but the Cameron ship also came about in the exact same way that the Larry one did, which was just basically based on like interactions online and in person that fans felt were showing to them that they were together. The time period that all of this was happening, by the way, was like 2012 to 2014 which was basically peak One Direction and Fifth Harmony stan Twitter. The space in general was growing like crazy. You had tons of people daily talking about One Direction or Fifth Harmony or trying to become a Wattpad writer. And naturally with growing groups of people that were completely convinced that couplings like Larry Stylinson and Cameron were real for whatever reason that was backed up with what they believed was evidence and that their management were the ones stopping them from going public, you could find a lot of fan fiction and discussion on Twitter about it. And I mean a lot of fan fiction about these pairings. Even today, if you try to search Harry and Louie or Camila and Lauren on Google, the autofill suggestions are things like dating, matching tattoos, fight, kiss, holding hands, proof, or ship name, relationship, elevator, fan fiction, and kiss. I do find it interesting though that both pairings when you Google them, one of the suggestions is the year 2020, which I do have a theory on why, but we'll get into that later. What's really interesting to me though is that one Direction hasn't been active since 2015, and Fifth Harmony disbanded back in 2018. So you would assume that the Cameron and Larry shippers would have slowed down or honestly been like completely gone at this point, like most shippers are when a show ends or a movie runs its course. And usually that ends up happening because there's less content for people to theorize over, or the people that they were shipping just don't hang out anymore. But for some reason, all of these years later, there are still Cameron and especially Larry shippers that are going strong. But why? I think before we can even get into trying to answer that question, we have to figure out why people ship celebrities and characters to begin with. 
actually found an article online from somebody who identified as someone who ships people and they just explained why they have fun shipping and they feel like other people do it as well. Their main points were things like it builds a fandom, it's a fun way to further engage with what you're watching, and it makes you feel like you're part of a community online. The point of that article was to prove that like shipping wasn't weird and they actually included something from the Huffington Post that I thought was really interesting. The vast majority of people who are engaging in this are doing so in an affirmative, positive, social engaging, feeling really connected with other people way. There's always this move to pathologize this process. I don't think it's a pathological one at all. I think it's really normal. I think what it says about you is that it says you care about connections and relationships to others, as we all do. So to engage in this is inherently normal. And they're not wrong, considering that if you look at shipping, you can either hope that a couple is getting together while you're watching a movie or show, or you're running a blog hoping that they're getting together. Like at the end of the day, it's just a matter of your passion for it. The article definitely focuses on ships that involve fictional people or characters, but I do think it's similar reasoning for people who ship actual people. For starters, the communities for these ships are insanely large, very close-knit communities and are very devoted. And that can be really appealing for anyone trying to get into a community online because they can also be very accepting. On top of that, I think one of the biggest core attractions to these ships is the idea that you're engaging with your idol or whoever you idolize on a level that nobody else is. And I think this is something that's unique to ships that involve real people instead of characters, because it's this idea that if you're shipping and believing in this secret relationship, then you're not tricked by their management. Like you know the truth and you know the real them that most of the general public and general fans don't. And if you're convinced of that, you also feel like you're working towards something. Like you're working towards showing the truth to everybody else and helping free your idols from this secret relationship that they have to hide. When it comes to figuring out why the Larry and Cameron fan bases have lasted so long though, especially considering One Direction has been inactive for six years and Fifth Harmony for three, I think it's a mix of things. Maybe it's wanting to hold on to the fan base that you grew up with and you don't want to let go of yet, or maybe it's just pure devotion to feeling like you need to uncover this secret and free these idols that you loved for so long. Trying to explain why SHIB can be toxic can be pretty hard to navigate if the people involved in it haven't spoken out about it, but one thing that's quite unique with the Cameron and Larry Stylins and ships is that there are people a part of those ships that have come out and talked about it. Louis Tomlinson has been vocal numerous times online, and Lauren Haregi did an interview where she talked about how the Cameron ship had put a strain on her relationship with Camila. People thought Camila and I were like, into each other. And that made me so uncomfortable, like disgustingly uncomfortable because I was queer, but she was not. Mm -hmm. And it made me feel like a predator, essentially. It made me feel like a predator because of the type of clips people would put together and the type of stories people would write and the type of stuff. I was always the aggressor and I was always the one turning her and I was always the one who was like, the the masculine energy in the scenario and it made me very uncomfortable because that's not how i identify and i also did not have that connection with her camille and i were just very good friends at that time and if you put aside everything and just picture a situation where you're in a band with somebody that you consider a friend and then find out you have this massive fan base of people that are convinced that you guys are dating and are devoted to exposing your relationship to free you that can probably feel pretty invasive. Lauren actually mentioned in the interview that at the time going through it and being a closeted bisexual woman it made it really tough to navigate and actually delayed her coming out because it made her uncomfortable. This is part of the reason that I chose these ships to focus on because I feel like when you're trying to figure out when a ship is toxic, it's when it starts to affect the people that are in it. And I think that the Larry and Cameron ships are just really great examples of people that were in the ship that were negatively affected in real life because the ship online just went too far. And back to my theory on why I feel like 2020 shows up when you search Harry and Louie or Camila and Lauren on Google, I think it's because people are trying to find recent interactions between them because they don't interact with each other publicly anymore. I'll leave you guys to draw your own conclusions as to why though. And you might be wondering if you'd never seen these ships in action back in their prime or even today, what could possibly be so bad if it's just fans harmlessly shipping you with a friend? But if you actually look at the kind of content that some of these shippers produce or the tiniest things they theorize over, 
It's easier to understand why someone being talked about that way online involving a friend of theirs might want to make it clear to their fan base that the ship isn't real. I think it's also worth mentioning here that when it comes to gay ship pairings, usually when people criticize those shippers of crossing boundaries or acting inappropriate, they'll always kind of fall back on the you're being homophobic argument. But I don't know if it's because they don't realize it or they do and they just don't care and just use it as an argument because they can, but the criticism against toxic ships when it comes to gay pairings has nothing to do with the insinuation that somebody might not be straight and just rather everything to do with the fact that if somebody comes out and says that they're straight, harassing them and saying that them saying that is just management forcing them to is kind of crossing boundaries. You're essentially claiming that you know more about them than they do. But even in situations where fans were right, Lauren isn't straight and at the time that people were saying that she wasn't, she was still in the closet. So yeah, they technically were right, but at what cost? I'm definitely not saying all of them by any means, but I do think there are a lot of people who have crossed the line of appreciation and just being a part of a community and have now just begun to actively fetishize these hypothetical secret relationships that involve real people. Overstepping boundaries alone is ignorant to the fact that fetishizing the potential that two people are in a gay relationship with each other in itself is harmful and objectifying. And you can see that through the way that interactions are sexualized to fit a certain narrative, but it's rationalized as finding proof or the truth. But even if they're right, wouldn't it be more respectful to acknowledge that maybe they want to stay in the closet for whatever reason that you definitely wouldn't know because you're a fan? You don't actually know them or their life. The reality is that Harry Styles and Louis Tomlinson aren't even managed by the same people anymore. Neither are Camila and Lauren. So if management were the ones stopping them from going public before, who's stopping them now? And if it's themselves, why can't toxic shippers accept that maybe regardless of the amount of time and effort that they've put into these ships, it's none of their business if the people involved don't want it to be, especially when the shippers have a well-documented past of taking the potential for it and hypersexualizing it. Of course, this isn't just an issue that affects ships that have gay pairings. Straight pairings also have the exact same issue where fans just take it way too far, especially in situations where one of the people in a ship will actually be a part of a separate relationship in real life, there've definitely been situations where fans have like flooded the mentions of that person and been like, "Oh, you're fake. You're just management trying to conceal their relationship and all this kind of stuff." And it's just crazy because it's an online ship that's impacting real life. Like in some areas of the internet, shipping has completely gone from hoping or rooting for a couple to get together to actively campaigning in people's mentions with exhibit A, B, and C that proves that these people are already in a secret relationship and they have to uncover it to save their idols. What's truly really insane to me though, is that there's a rumor that K-pop companies, which if you aren't really well versed, they're kind of like the same popularity that One Direction was back then, but apparently these companies are purposely encouraging bandmates to engage in skinship to satisfy shippers online to help market their boy group further. Obviously, this is just a rumor, but the idea that shippers could have this much power is kind of concerning, especially when you remember that these aren't characters in a show that are being written to end up together. They're real people. So with all that being said, is there a solution to toxic ships? Like I said before, not every person that engages in shipping is toxic. Not every ship is toxic, but it's clear that there are some that have crossed insane boundaries. But even knowing that some people have taken it way too far, how do we stop them? Like, is there even a way to stop them? At the end of the day, when even the people a part of the ship telling shippers to stop isn't working, what can we do? It's the internet. People can post whatever the hell they want, and if they're backed by a strong community of people that believe the same thing they do, they're probably not gonna stop doing it just because a few people told them that they were crossing boundaries. This is where I realized while I was researching that I don't have an answer for this. Like, I don't even really know if you can do anything about it at the end of the day. Are celebrities just supposed to accept the potential that they might end up in a shit pairing that has a super toxic community that impacts their everyday life the same way they have to accept other parts of their job? Like tabloids? I guess at this point the answer is yes, which sucks when you consider that toxic shipping is literally just fans not knowing boundaries, but I'd really like to hear about what you guys think about the whole concept of shipping and when shipping goes too far and turns toxic, so if you want to join in the discussion feel free to join in the comments down below. But if you did enjoy the video feel free to give it a like and subscribe to the channel. You can also be notified every single time I upload by clicking the bell and setting it to all. You can also find me outside of YouTube on Twitch where I stream weekly. 
It's a lot of fun in my opinion. I'll leave the link for that down below in the pinned comment if you're interested. You can also find me on Twitter and Instagram, which are both at Casey Yonzo. And yeah, that's about it for me. I really hope you guys enjoyed today's video and I'll see you guys in the next one.